An absolute pleasure to be joined by Blue Jays all-star outfielder George Springer. George, thank you so much for joining Jesse and myself mm -hmm. right now. And look, I know 28 runs is one thing, but yesterday you hitting a grand slam, Pujols in the building, Buck back in the booth, the vibes felt like the peak vibes. I'm curious as to how you experienced yesterday at the Rogers Center. Uh, I mean, it was electric, man. I mean, from, you know, it's a, a Monday night or a, a Tuesday night game, excuse me. You know, it was probably it was as close to sold out as I think I've ever seen it, you know, during the week. You know, it's just awesome. Obviously, having Albert around, um, you know, he's a Hall of Famer in waiting. You know, whenever he decides to not play anymore, you know, he'll be a first ballot Hall of Famer. So it's it's uh, a big night. You know, the, uh, the Jays are playing well. And, I mean, it was an overall kind of emotional, electric atmosphere. Obviously, you know, having Buck back as well. Uh, George, your manager after the win last night, John Schneider, called you a stud and said, quote, he's continuously made big plays in big moments his whole career. What is it about big spots like last night coming to the plate, bases juiced, hitting a grand slam? What is it about those moments that allows you to rise to the occasion? Uh, I mean, I just believe that, you know, this is this is why I play the game, you know, for 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 these moments, you know, to to remember these, you know, the older I get, obviously, um, you know, so what when I'm I'm long done playing, you know, I can tell my son about it, and I could tell him, you know, about about the moments. I just like having fun, you know. I like I like trying to do what I can do in the moment, and then you know, I move on. But it's 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 about having fun for me, and it's this is you know this, this is a very very easy team to to have fun on, to have fun with. So you know, you know, obviously, you know, but being around these guys is uh, is huge. I think, George, there are going to be a lot of moms and dads telling their kids about some of the things you've been doing in a Jays <laughs> uniform in years from now as well, including uh, being part of the team that scored 28 runs in a baseball game. I know you weren't in the lineup. I know I'm sure you're wishing you were, but what was that experience like, yeah. seeing a team just do all of that in one game and being part of the team that did it? Yeah, I mean – Obviously, you know, I think all of us as players understand, you know, that's an outlier game. It's an outlier night. You know, everything went right um, for us and everything went about as far wrong as it could go for them. <laughs> but, you know, it, I think it, 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 you know, it shows, you know, the guys that we have on this team, you know, the, the, the abilities that lie within each guy. And you know, obviously I think everybody up and down the lineup had three hits or four hits and whatever it was. And, it, you know, it just shows that – you know, when a good team clicks on a, a night like that, you know, stuff stuff like that can happen. You know, you you don't ever expect to, to, to score 28 runs, but, man, that was uh, that was special. Must have been fun to play. It was certainly uh, fun to watch for Blue Jays fans, that's for sure. So, John Schneider has lost one game since becoming manager of the Toronto Blue Jays. Has there been anything that's changed inside the clubhouse, inside the dugout maybe? You guys are notorious for having a lot of fun in the dugout and that certainly doesn't look like it's changed so has anything really changed that you can provide some insight as to John Schneider being at the helm now um you know I just think it's you know who he is you know how you know you know how he is on the field you know, he likes to have fun I mean, he says some stuff that is is just borderline crazy which <laughs> but in in a, a re really really funny way you know he always always seems to make it nice and relaxed and you you know, when 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 he was the bench coach, you know, he was the same way. And and uh, you know, I I I think you know he's starting to see um, you know who who us are as 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 you know a team and and as a guy on the other side of it is is uh, is awesome. You know, he's been fun. You know, he communicates well, and and uh, you know, hopefully, you know, he never changes. Just like we we, we mess with him every day. Uh, Jays fans are hoping the results don't change as well. They've been really, really good of late, George. Uh, listen, Rogers Moments was able to fly some fans from BC down to Seattle when you guys were recently taking on the Mariners. I know you got to spend a lot of time uh, with some kids and some fans there. What was that experience like for you? Uh, that was awesome. I mean, absolutely incredible. You know, I, I, I think what gets lost on us as players is, you know, we, we're, we're not just representing a market. We're, we're – mm -hmm. We're playing for a you know a whole country and and when you you're out west you know obviously um, a lot of people came you know what were there were 
we're about as close to to home for a lot of people as it'll probably ever get. So it's it, it was was awesome to see. It was it was just a great moment for us as a team. You know, obviously we wish we, we could have played a little better, but you know to to have the stadium packed and it was all the Blue Jays fans. Man, that was incredible. Were your first experiences in Detroit and Seattle a bit shocking when you realized how many fans are actually you know dedicated to this team across the country? Oh, 100 percent. I mean, when when we, we were in in Detroit, I, I, I you know, that was the first time I'd ever I'd ever seen it, you know, as a player. And it was kind of it was it was like almost like you had to kind of step back a little bit and say, wow, like, again, you know, we're not just representing a market, a city, you know, we're, we're representing a country. And, and, you know, as far as far as there's land here, you know, there's there's a, a Blue Jay fan somewhere. So it's again, it's 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 awesome for us and it's for sure not lost. And Rogers Moments is giving fans a chance to win a VIP trip to see the Jays play live. You get tickets and airfare and hotel and behind the scenes access. Rogers Moments giving these types of experiences away to fans all year long. To enter for your chance to win, you can head to rogers.com slash Blue Jays. The contest closes on August 10th. All right, George, we've got a couple more minutes with you. We want to take, we want you to take us through some of your best defensive plays, and there are just a ton. We have to sift through a lot of unbelievable <laughs> plays, George, uh, to narrow it down to the ones we have. So we're going to play some. We're going to have you kind of break them down with us. Cool? All right, cool. All right, let's start uh, with what we believe is the best catch you've had as a Blue Jay so far. So this one... Uh, Oh, this is in New York. Yeah, you know. You already know. That's what I love about athletes. They just know exactly what the moment was. And uh, so take us through this one, man, because there's always this, a surprise and excited look on your face when you make one of these catches. Yeah, so right there, we, we were actually, um, obviously with uh, with Hunjin, you know, he get he gets a lot of, you know, soft, soft swings. And, and uh, so I, w I was actually shaded oppo a tick for some reason. Um, because we we'll you know, where uh, where he hits the ball, and it's just just kind of one of those. You know, as as soon as it gets hit, I broke, and I could tell as I'm getting closer that I'm starting to close on it. Um, but as I'm getting closer, there's this there's this alarm in every outfielder's head that says you're getting closer to the wall. And I could tell I was getting closer to the wall, but the problem was was I was going so fast and I was <laughs> I was so committed to trying to get to it that I just said, Screw it. I mean, it is what, what it is. <laughs> I knew I was close to the wall, but I knew it wasn't I didn't I didn't actually re realize I was as close as I th thought I was, but um at that point in time, you know, I I had a good beat on it and it was one of those like I'm gonna go for it and I caught it, I hit the ground and I was just honestly shocked that the ball stayed in my glove because I hit the ground so hard and it's just a huge play um, in that moment, man. I'll I'll never forget that. I I actually scuffed my arm up, you know, pretty good on the track. It was well worth the uh, the band aids. That's so good. Okay, let's let's go to 2022 this year, uh, April 25th, a catch against Boston. Uh, you want to take us through because that was great insight. I, I yeah, enjoyed that thoriously. Really good break. So why don't you we take us through what your future career is going to be, yeah. George? It's great. <laughs> Look at this one again. Right. So. So again, almost the same thing. Um, you know, obviously being in division, I play Ploiecki a lot. You know, he he uh, he tends to kind of pull the ball, you know, to, to that side of the field. And if you actually watch it, I actually move over a step in that direction mm -hmm. because it was a plus count for him. So I figured I'm like, you know what, he's probably going to try to drive this thing right here. So why not, you know shade that way? And actually, as I'm starting to shade, he hits it. So I got I get kind of like a little bit of like a jogging start into it and again a very similar play where it's it gets hit and as as you know I'm running I can tell that I'm starting to gain on it and as I'm you know starting to gain on it I'm like oh man I'm actually getting a lot closer than I thought I was going to get to it same situation I knew I was I was getting closer to the wall again just this time there's it's a, not a dirt track, it's a turf track, so that one's a little, little bit harder to judge, but it's all good. Um, I get close to it, I stick my glove out, I get to it, and again, I was just shocked that it actually stayed in my glove because, again, I hit the ground so hard. Um, but, hey, I'll take it. It's awesome. Um, I love to do stuff like that. <laughs> No uh, Jays fans love seeing you do stuff like that. As well. I, I think you got to stop being shocked at the balls not escaping your glove because you're doing this so much. We got this one against your former team in Houston. Uh, this one was nuts, man, too. Just running, feels like the other way, ninth inning catch as well. Man, Close what do you remember about too. this? 
Uh, yeah, you know, obviously, I know this hitter pretty well. Yeah. You know, I, I know what he can do. Um, you know, he doesn't really hit the ball that way all, all that often. So when he did hit it that way, it was like, oh, no. You know, <laughs> I hope I'm in the right position to get to it. And as I'm I'm getting closer again this time, I, I knew I was I was actually going to get that this one. Um, the problem was was it was a matter of if I was going to eat the wall completely or not eat the wall completely. So I was I was able to, uh, you know, to to close on and actually get my head out of the way. And the only thing I could think about was getting the ball in as fast as I could because I know the guy on second – uh, is fast and I actually kind of I mean I'm not gonna lie like I got up and I panicked a little bit because I didn't really know where to throw the ball <laughs> so as soon as I saw Vladdy I just kind of turned around and threw it to Vladdy and hoped that it was the right play and you know and it ended up being the right play <laughs> Honestly, uh, one thing that I'm taking away from this, and I know you're a professional, but you got to be so hyper aware of everything. Yeah. Like who's on base? Yeah. Who's at bad? What's yeah. going on? Um, one more for you. Uh, a catch against Boston uh, just last month in June. Uh, you want to take us through this one as well? Yeah. Again, um, I'm actually over in, in the other gap because that that's where he hits the ball. You know, I, th I think. Um, the problem is, is he hit it off the end of the bat. But you know, a big stadium, you know, it's loud all the time. It's it's hard to hear the sound of the ball sometimes off the bat, which a lot of outfielders like to do. Is right. you know, you 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 can judge a swing and you can also hear it and you you, you can know, you know, in back, you know, right left, all that stuff. But he hits it off the end of the bat, and I I kind of freeze for a split second because the sound didn't match up with what the ball was doing. And then at, at that point, it's just an absolute jailbreak just just run as fast <laughs> as I can I got a beat on it and you know was I was obviously a able to get close to it and then I just decided to flip the ball to Santi because I was tired that was so good yeah he, what a great breakdown <laughs> of everything. And I, I know you like that one a little bit more because there's no wall to deal with on the other yeah. side there. you're running free towards there's the no field. wall to deal with it's just <laughs> me versus myself 100 yeah. percent and uh, <laughs> more often than not you're winning man listen we used to make compilations for Kevin Pillar we're gonna have to start making some mixtapes for you in the outfield as well George listen we really appreciate your time and your insights best of luck the rest of the way all right guys appreciate it like unreal loves the game like there's one thing that that I saw aside from being super aware of what was going on but just the passion that he had <laughs> and the love that when he makes catches like that the love that he feels for the game uh, listen man the details were unbelievable he knew the count he knew the players he knew where to step he knew where his first step or second step should be no matter where the ball's being played that was a real cool revelation from George Springer and uh, hopefully whether it's us or not or this show, I mean, that you're part of, there's more stuff like that from athletes as well because that was a really cool insight into how the mind of an athlete works. I, I really enjoyed that conversation with George.